Welcome to this final webinar on the 2014-15 Relocate Awards with me, Louise Whitson, and Relocate's Managing Editor, Fiona Murchie. There's only a week to go until our deadline for entering this year's awards, Friday the 13th of March. Full details of each category and downloadable entry forms are on our website. New for this year, we have some extra resources to help you make the most of your entry. A series of downloadable step-by-step -step guides, one for each award, which you'll find in the Categories section, and a special webinar on compiling a winning submission recorded by Relocate Awards Judge Dr Sue Shortland, Principal Lecturer in Human Resource Management in the Business School at London Metropolitan University. Also on the website, we have a new series of interviews in which past Relocate Awards winners and current sponsors share their insights into the hottest topics in global mobility and their perspectives on Relocation's premier awards. Our 12 awards cover both HR and corporate and the wide range of service suppliers and specialist providers. If you're in doubt about which is right for you, please call or email. Good practice deserves to be celebrated, so do take the plunge and enter today. In this webinar, we'll be answering some questions on the Relocate Awards and how to enter them. But first, as this is our last webinar of the series, we'll quickly run through all 12 categories and highlight the key points about each. Fiona, would you like to start? Our first award is Technological Innovation in Relocation. This category is open to HR and suppliers, both UK and internationally based. It's about a solution and something innovative that aids or supports relocation or makes the experience better for those managing or undergoing a move. The technology can cover any area, relocation management, tax tracking, global mobility training or communication software or cross-cultural support perhaps. Recruitment and talent management solutions are also eligible. Last year's winner was Deloitte's Data Analytics for Mobility System. Webinar 4 featured an interview with Director Scott McCormick in which we discussed the importance of technology in the relocation context and how winning the award has benefited Deloitte, so do listen again via the website. The diversity of entries is reflected by our 2013-14 winner, Peregrine Immigration Management, with Imiguru, a web-based database containing information on hundreds of immigration processes to countries worldwide. Consider It Done was highly commended in 2013-14 for its Home Tech Genius service, which cuts through the complexity of integrating home technology, showing the diversity of high-quality technology that is emerging across the global mobility sector. And we should mention that the entry process for this award is slightly different. Instead of providing a short entry statement, followed by examples of excellence against five criteria, entrants provide a longer entry statement, 250 to 500 words, plus supporting material if they wish. You will be required to supply a demo of the technological innovation or a link to a website that includes PDFs. We will contact you to arrange the demo within a few days of the closing date for entries. Confidentiality is assured and if you need help with your demo, please contact us. If you're successful in the first stage of the judging, you'll be asked to make a short supporting presentation to the judges. If you have any queries about the entry process or whether your solution is eligible, please do call or email us. Next are the three HR categories, Inspirational HR Team of the Year, sponsored by Grable Relocation, Best HR and Supplier Strategy or Team, sponsored by Cheval Residences, and Best Managing or Growing Talent Initiative. Fiona, remind us first about Inspirational HR Team of the Year. We've had some great winners of this category, including John Lewis, Lloyd's Register Group, and most recently ING Investment Management India. But you don't have to be a big blue chip organisation to enter. We want to hear from smaller companies too, and individuals working with colleagues internally, or with an outsourced partner perhaps. Perhaps those HR teams news to relocation or helping to grow their organisation's presence in a new or challenging environment should think about entering this year to gain recognition for their activities, motivate their team and promote the value of mobility to their businesses operating in this fast changing and complex arena. Sometimes a merger or acquisition leads to a relocation and how your team handles the move can make an award winning case study review of relocation policy and strategy due to growth or a change in the market or a group move either domestic or international can pre present a really inspiring demonstration of engagement and teamwork 
as would utilising technology or leadership to overcome skill shortages. A key point to this category to remember is that a team can be any size. It can be just one person working with other departments within your organisation or with a specialist provider. You can hear an interview Fiona did with Bev Latham of Lloyd's Register Group, our inspirational HR team of the year winner in 2012-13, by tuning into webinar 3 available via the website. We are now going to watch a video in which Simon Mason of Gravel Relocation explains why the Inspirational HR Team of the Year Award is so important in raising awareness of the contribution HR make to growing global businesses. He also talks about current trends in global mobility, including changes in assignment types, demographics and policy. I'm speaking to Simon Mason, Gravel Relocation's Vice President of Business De Development for the EMEA region. Grable is sponsoring this year's Relocate Awards for Inspirational HR Team of the Year, one of our most important categories. As many listeners will know, Grable Relocation is a management firm that provides full-service relocation, mobility and consultancy for services for global 100 and Fortune 500 companies on six continents. Simon Mason has more than 10 years' experience in the relocation industry and has relocated half a dozen times, including stints in Australia and the USA. So he's familiar with the cultural nuances and challenges faced by an executive on an overseas assignment. First, let's talk about Inspirational HR Team of the Year. What made Grable Relocation decide to sponsor the Relocate Awards in general and this category in particular? So this year uh, actually represents the first time Grable Relocation has sponsored the awards. Um, we feel privileged to be associated with an organization in uh, Relocate Global that provides such wonderful resources and insights to the supporters in global mobility. Specifically, we were inspired by this award due to the very nature of its title, Inspirational HR Team of the Year. Um, conjures up all sorts of impressions of um, fantastic achievements uh, within mobility within many organizations and we believe that the past winners and nominees of this award have epitomized the word inspirational in terms of what's been achieved through accomplishments within each of their businesses and this category highlights the critical contribution that HR actually makes to achieving the overall business objectives of any organization. Mm, I'm delighted you feel that because that's absolutely what we were aiming for. So can you tell us about Grable Relocation and how it supports business agenda and growth in international markets? Sure. Um, Grable Relocation is a leading global provider of assignment management and employee relocation services. In 165 countries, we work with leaders in the global 100 all the way through to companies that are beginning to take their first steps internationally. Um, we actually work a lot with globally active organizations and specifically consult on their programs, their policies, and then source and administer the services all over the globe. Previously, Grable actually focused exclusively on US companies, but in 2008, we opened up our first service center in EMEA. And since then, our mission is to establish ourselves as the supplier and employer of choice across the globe, but specifically in the European market. Mm. And what, what are the current trends in global mobility among Grable clients? So this is actually an area which is kind of very close to my heart because earlier in my career, I led uh, extensive academic research into the trends within global mobility. Now, in the last four years, Grable has managed over 227,000 assignments and relocations worldwide. So during that time, we've seen a whole number of changes um, that have passed through mobility. Um, today, I'm supported by Grable's consultancy teams, and we have the privilege of working with many of our clients on kind of hot topics such as compliance, integration with talent management, um, extended business travelers, um, and also um, right down to, I guess, issues that surround the uh, complexities of intra-country policies and technology. And it's the latter um, two elements which have been a real area of focus for some of our accounts recently, um, where we've added a lot of additional value in helping them achieve 
um, the goals that they set out for themselves in those areas. So I guess to start with uh, intra-country policies, um, two countries specifically would be intra-China and intra-India activity, but it's not just emerging markets that have kind of seen this focus. Actually, a number of countries within Europe as well uh, and clients have realized that the intra-country activity is a breeding ground for issues with compliance and also potentially transfer dissatisfaction due to often a lack of oversight or just a fragmented supply chain management. Um, the second key element that I talked about there is technology and I kind of see that go in two different directions in terms of trends with our current clients. One, technology as a solution to provide additional support to the lump sum transferee and secondly the utilization of technology essentially with predictive analytics specifically to take the guesswork out of forecasting within global mobility and also provide a very effective vehicle to elevate the importance of global mobility from a business process to a true strategic asset. So you've certainly got lots to talk about and great research there. So any readers and viewers can um, have a look at that on the Grable section of our website. So thanks very much for filling us in. Um, I know you cover countries such as Brazil and Singapore and UA UAE, um, immigration reforms, all sorts of things. So it's absolutely perfect, it seems to me, that you're sponsoring the Inspirational HR Team of the Year Award. So thanks very much for talking to us. Great, thank you, and we're very pleased to be supporting the awards. Thank you. Now, Fiona, moving on to Best HR and Supplier Strategy or Team, which recognises the outstanding work being done by HR and Supplier Partnerships. The HR team may be working in partnership with the supplier on a particular project that requires a new strategy. Alternatively, it may be delivering a total package with support from an outsourced supplier. The judges will want to see evidence of a seamless partnership between HR team and supplier. It's not too late to contact your colleagues on the supplier side or the corporate side and showcase your collaborative achievements. Entry to, should indicate whether they're entering a team or a strategy by ticking the appropriate box. We're now going to see a video in which Doug Greenwood of Cheval Residences, which is sponsoring this year's Best HR and Supplier Strategy or Team Award, shares his views on the serviced accommodation market, the opportunities ahead for the sector, and its role in supporting global mobility. I'm talking to Doug Greenwood, Director of Sales and Marketing of Ch Cheval Residences, the sponsors of the Best HR and Supplier Strategy or Team Award. So Doug, what made you decide to sponsor the Relocate Awards this year? Thanks, Fiona. Uh, this year we were delighted actually to be uh, given the opportunity to sponsor the awards, uh, primarily really because we want Cheval Residences just to uh, gain a little better perception within our marketplace in terms of just that visibility that these awards will give us um, and hopefully that we can com communicate that message actually through to the, wo the wider audience that you have. And your apartments, they're in London and further afield? We do, uh, yeah. We have apartments actually throughout the, uh, both the west and the east side of London. Um, 500, just over 500 odd apartments. Um, obviously ranging um, in terms of that whole one bed, two bed, three bed uh, status. Um, really at the higher end of the marketplace. But actually what is key to us is that we've changed our model uh, looking really at a transient uh, positioning in terms of uh, stays for one and two nights as well as the more traditional relocate uh, uh, option as far as those one, two, and three month options. So we really want to get that message over that we've, we've got more flexibility actually within our business. Excellent. And so what trends have you noticed in recent months and how do you see the market in 2015 for service departments? Yeah, certainly 2015 I think will be a really, really good year for us. Um, and certainly within the marketplace we've seen new entrants coming into the marketplace, a little bit more competition perhaps, but certainly uh, from our side, there's a much uh, greater appreciation of the uh, services and uh, opportunities that we're offering within the whole sector. Um, we really are competing against that hotel uh, market and we're uh, hopefully going to give them a run for their money in 2015. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and we'll look forward to seeing you at the Gala Awards dinner. Thank you very much, Doug thank Greenwood. Thank you very much, Fiona. That brings us to Best Managing or Growing Talent Initiative, which was new last year. 
It's aimed at HR and mobility professionals and talent management, recruitment and resourcing departments in the private and public sectors. Talent and employee engagement are, of course, extremely topical at the moment. Experience gained on international assignment is very important for nurturing talent, and development experience in the context of the domestic market is equally valuable in all kinds of industry sectors. Yes, and that's why we're looking for examples of best practice in areas like selection of talent and tailored solutions for countries, genders and ages, and levels of seniority, as well as evidence of building a talent pipeline. Also, how costs are managed and how learning on assignment is consolidated on return. We'd like to see examples of end-to-end -end programmes where the assignee is also developing a successor and building a local pipeline. Shining examples of global mobility working together with talent management should be rewarded and we'd love to hear how they are supporting business growth. Over now to Louise, who will tell us about the Relocation Service Provider or Team of the Year category, which is sponsored again this year by Skyline Worldwide. We welcome entrants from across the relocation sector, including relocation management companies and specialist providers such as removal companies. Subject to sufficient breadth of entries, we will subdivide this category to reward different types and sizes of organisation as we have in previous years. The 2013-14 awards, for example, saw two winners of this category, IPM Global Mobility as Service Provider of the Year and Brookfield Global Relocation Services as Global Service Provider of the Year. Fiona spoke to IPM's Alan Bentley in webinar three. You can hear the interview and watch a video of Alan giving his thoughts on global mobility and the awards via the website. That brings us to the Best Property Provider or Solution Award. Fiona, remind us about this one. This is another very popular category, and rightly so, because having the right accommodation for assignees and their families is key to successful relocations. We want to hear about property specialists doing creative things in challenging markets. We're keen to encourage entries from as wide a range of organisations as possible. Entry is open to any company, large or small, which provides property solutions from DSPs to service accommodation providers, letting or estate agents. We also welcome entries from furniture rental companies, property finders and other niche providers. An interview with Abby Lucy of Skyline Worldwide, our 2013-14 winner, broadcast in webinar 4 and available on the website, showed the level of service found within this sector and the enthusiasm generated by these awards. We hope it will inspire all you property specialists to get out there and get involved. Our next category is Financial Support and Innovation, one of the four awards that were new last year. It's designed for organisations that provide specialist financial support to employers or their relocating employees. We're keen to open this category to as wide a range of support providers as possible. Banks, tax experts and pensions and foreign exchange advisors are just some of the specialists who may wish to enter. The judges will be looking for proof of consistently high standards and excellent service, for example customer or client testimonials, feedback forms and survey results. Our first winner was commercial foreign exchange provider Halo Financial, which prides itself on simplifying a seemingly complex FX market and providing bespoke solutions. This, the company says, has helped both individuals and businesses with relocation and overseas transactions. If you have any queries about eligibility or any other aspect of this category, please call or email. We turn now to Immigration Team of the Year, another category that was new for 2013-14. It recognises providers of specialist immigration support to companies which are relocating employees and their families and is sponsored by Smithstone Walters. Immigration, of course, is high on the global mobility agenda. Employers are increasingly aware of the challenges they face in dealing with immigration visa issues and of the risks involved if they fail to comply with regulations. Over to you, Fiona, to tell us who can enter this category. Any organisation involved in relocation on the corporate or supplier side is eligible. This includes specialist immigration companies, relocation management teams with an immigration section, HR teams with external suppliers, relocation management companies or destination service providers and in-house corporate immigration departments. And are there any particular points that teams that entering this category should bear in mind? It's important that supplier entrants explain their service and its purpose and provide proof of the contribution the service makes to business success in the relocation context. 
corporates who've illustrated how their approach to immigration has enhanced their organisation's reputation, aided recruitment and retention, contributed to take up of mobility and supported international assignments. Our first winner was UK immigration practice Miss Stone Waters. The judges praised the team's understanding of the role of immigration within relocation. And you can watch a video of James Waters talking about the importance of immigration on our website and in webinar 4. Our next award, Global Health and Wellness, another of the newer ones, reflects the growing awareness among employers of the contribution made by health and wellness initiatives to the welfare of staff and the success of the business. The increase in the number of international assignments to remote destinations and challenging locations where healthcare can be hard to find or disease is prevalent makes healthcare solutions and the right insurance increasingly important. Employees need to feel supported when they go to dangerous locations and executives and their families need to feel they will be well looked after while they are on a business trip, project or international assignment. So, suppliers of security services and emergency assistance are also eligible for this award, as are organisations providing family support, including childcare and elder care solutions. Wellness programmes and coping with stress in the workplace can improve productivity, aid retention and save organisations money, so we want to hear about these initiatives too. It's important to note that this award isn't just for suppliers. Corporates can enter their in-house wellness schemes. Our 2013-14 winner was an innovative screening programme from Helix International. We're now going to watch a video interview with Helix's Dave White, in which he explains why it's so important for HR to understand health wellness and healthcare issues when managing a global team or international assignments. Today I'm speaking to Dave White, Global Director of Sales and Marketing at Medical Security and Travel Assistance Service Provider Helix International. Helix won the inaugural Relocate Award for Global Health and Wellness in 2013-14 for its International Medical Screening Service, which enables employers to assess the health risks facing their global workers and relocating dependents, and to ensure they are suitably prepared before undertaking an assignment abroad. Dave has a wealth of experience of working with global organisations, relocating staff abroad and providing them with medical and security assistance, international occupation, health services, etc. Dave has a wealth of experience of working with global organisations, relocating staff abroad and providing them with medical and security assistance and international occupational health services. First, let's talk about the Global Health and Wellness Award. This was the first year of this new category. So why did Helix decide to enter and what were the benefits of winning? Look, um, on the medical screening side that Helix International is responsible for, we, we challenged the marketplace over three and a half years ago. <clears throat> we looked at the industry, um, how it was actually being done as pre-deployment medicals. And we looked and worked out there is a better way of doing this. So our understanding was to educate the market and then finally put a solution in place for our clients that they really did not only need, but actually now appreciate. And it's gone successfully very well for us. So why is it important for HR to understand about health and wellness and healthcare issues? Um, and what, what do they need to know in managing a global team or an international assignment? It's amazing how many times we screen the populations and when there's a material issue in there. Um, and HR gets involved into that process after consent is signed off. How the company was unaware of either the employee or their dependents' illnesses. Now, why would they be? But the reality of them now going overseas to a foreign post is going to have significant bearing on them. To the extent we've seen treatment paths in foreign countries that can be into hundreds of thousands of dollars, whereas if they just turned up and not gone through a screening process, the company's backpedaling already. So by HR understanding what the risks are, preparing their people before they go overseas, but more importantly, identifying issues. It might be getting prescription medications in China. It might be getting treatment paths out of Shanghai that aren't available, so they've got to go down to Hong Kong. But the reality of the matter is, is that those problems will come back and bite global mobility, international HR. They have to deal with it. And Really, as I said at the start, because they were preventable and predictable, that's actually just unnecessary and it's actually poor risk management practice. 
and that's also for the employee as well and their family. Absolutely. Uh, there's the other side here. We're, we're talking talent management. If we're going to send our people overseas for two to three years on behalf of our organisations, we want to be looking after them and we want to look after them so they're going to be healthy, they're going to be safe, be able to continue their assignment and finish the job that we sent them out there to do in the first place. Um, but how well informed are they going to be about those risks? I think they'll feel a little bit better as employees that the corporation's actually looking after them in perhaps the more emotional touch side of it. So critical. But at the same time, what's this about? It's good business continuity. It's planning for foreseeable risks so it addresses your duty of care. But also, for the worst case scenario, it protects your brand and, and, and certainly your intellectual property that you are sending overseas. And to do that at the very start around their medical health, that's just sound risk practice. We move on now to excellence in employee and family support. It's open to individuals and organisations from any sector who provide a specialist service to relocating employees and their families. These could be education consultants, schools, providers of childcare, concierge services or suppliers of language tu tuition or cross-cultural support. Subject to breadth of entries, we'll subdivide this category. Our 2013-14 winner was Australian company Elite Executive Services, which took the award for what the judges described as a high calibre submission that exuded a unique understanding of family needs and a commitment to working flexibly, with a genuine empathy running through its core. Webinar 2 includes an interview with Elite Executive Services, recorded after the 2013-14 Gala Awards dinner. We continue now with Best International Destination Services Provider, which is open to individuals and small companies, which we define as having up to 30 employees. It's sponsored by Bridge Street Global Hospitality. Some people have asked whether international means that you can't enter if you're in the UK. Well, you can enter, provided you're dealing with international clients. We've also been asked whether some sort of quality accreditation is necessary. The answer is that you don't need formal accreditation, but you must demonstrate excellence in driving core DSB services and other subsidiary services you may offer. You can hear an interview with Lorna Keane of sponsor Bridge Street Global Hospitality via the website and in webinar form. Our final category is Relocation Personality of the Year, which honours an individual, HR or supplier, from any sector or organisation who has contributed to the profession or industry over at least 10 years or achieved something outstanding. Fiona, the entry process for this award is a bit different, isn't it? Yes, it's a bit shorter than for other categories because we want relocation professionals from across the board to indicate who they feel deserves this accolade. We appreciate that time is limited, so you can let us know who you think would be a worthy winner by calling or emailing us and we will follow up your suggestions. Or, if you wish, you can fill in the shortened entry form yourself. Remember to provide plenty of referees and ask people within your circle to contribute to the entry. You may enter yourself if you want to. Previous winners of this category illustrate its breadth. You'll find details in the categories section of the website. Mona Radwan, our 2013-14 winner, is founder and president of Cairo-based Global Relocation Consultants and a shining star of the relocation industry. The entrance for Relocation Personality of the Year 2012-13 was so outstanding that the judges named two winners, Elaine Crow of Rank Group as UK winner, and Helmut Berg of RSB Deutschland as international winner. Both have had long and distinguished careers in relocation. The next part of the webinar will focus on answering some of the questions you've been asking about the awards. Please call or email us if you have any other queries. And do have a look at the Frequently Asked Questions section of our website. So, to get us started, a supplier has asked whether it's better to enter one large case study or several smaller ones for an award. With most of the categories, this is up to the entrant. However, if you're entering Best HR and Supplier Strategy or Team, this category is aimed at those working with one particular client. And another supplier has asked whether the entry statements and other information from their submission will be published. They're wondering whether they should get permission from any clients they mentioned before submitting their entry. Entry statements and criteria are not published as such, but we might use the information from them in subsequent editorial. We compile case studies on all our winners, and in some cases the runners-up, which are published in the summer issue of Relocate magazine and on the website. 
This is fabulous publicity for the organisations concerned, but clients can be anonymous if you wish. Likewise, for the awards presentation, we often choose something from the submission to explain why the winners won. You can highlight on the form or covering email if permission needs to be obtained from a client. Our next question is, our talent management team has incorporated international assignments into our company's global programme. Can we put them forward for Inspirational HR Team of the Year? Yes, we recognise that talent management is hugely important to growing and supporting international and domestic business. Teams involved in employee engagement also quite qualify to enter this category and we would urge them to do so. Equally, change projects, mergers and acquisitions and group moves make fantastic case studies. And as we said earlier, we now have a category that recognises talent management initiatives. And what sort of supporting documentation can entrants provide? That's up to individual entrants, but it shouldn't be more than 10 pages as specified on the entry form for each category. In previous years, some entrants have provided a short PowerPoint presentation as a useful way of getting information across. Appropriate case studies, testimonials and references from clients and suppliers are always useful to illustrate key points. You'll find more guidance on supporting material and other aspects of compiling your entry in our new downloadable step-by-step -step guides, one for each award, which you'll find in the Categories section of the website. Several people have asked whether there is a charge for entering. You can enter a maximum of three awards free of charge. Further entries are charged at £100 plus VAT each to cover administration. We move on now to a question about how the awards are judged. Fiona. Our judging panel is composed of independent experts who reflect the diversity of those working in relocation and international assignments and the wide range of suppliers and professionals engaged in supporting relocation and mobility. See the Relocate Awards section of the website for full details of the judging criteria and marking system. Well, that's just about it for today. But just to remind you, the deadline for receipt of entries is Friday the 13th of March, a week today, and full details with entry forms are on the website. The shortlist will be announced in April, and winners will receive their trophies at the Gala Awards Dinner, which takes place on Thursday the 14th of May at the Institute of Directors in Central London. I'd like to end by thanking all our contributors to this series of webinars. And of course, I want to thank our sponsors very much indeed for making the awards possible and the organisations that provide professional endorsements. There's plenty of information on the website, including our new step-by-step -step guides to compiling a winning submission and Sue Shortland's inspiring video. You can listen to the full series of webinars and sign up for the awards newsletter there too. So please enter and make these the best Relocate Awards ever. Thank you for listening and I look forward to seeing you at the Gala Awards Dinner.